Uh, thank you so much for joining us. So am I correct in my summary of what ZAPO is trying to do, trying to rebuild the party to its former glory? Yes, you, you are correct. I think, thank you for having us. You are correct in saying that. But what I can say is that uh, just one correction which I would like to make is that we, we, we did not get into a coalition with ZANU-PF in 1983. Actually, from 1983 to 1987, there was a genocide in Zimbabwe where uh, ZAPU uh, was targeted by ZANU-PF and ordinary Ndebele people were killed by ZANU-PF during that period. So we were pushed into a coalition uh, with ZANU-PF uh, in 1987. That's when we got into that kind of an arrangement. But we need to clarify that that arrangement uh, was a forced arrangement. It was an arrangement uh, to help uh, stop the killings of our people. Because 25,000 people had been killed by ZANU-PF. And you're referring, of course, to the Gokuro Hundi killings um, in the early 1980s. Yes. Thank you for that clarity. Just tell us a little bit more about why you're in South Africa. I understand you are seeking a meeting with the ANC. What is the message that you want to give them regarding what's going on in Zimbabwe at the moment? Yes, we have requested uh, meetings with the ANC and the SACP and also with Umkonto Sizwe. The, the first thing we'd like to do is to remind our comrades we shared trenches with, because there's been a lot of alternative truths uh, which have been said by Zanu PF that they shared trenches with, with, with uh, MK, which never happened. Zanu PF never shared trenches with MK, but MK shared trenches with, with Zipra. And we all know that. So this is one of the things we'd like to remind our comrades in MK and the SACP and also would like to bring to, to the attention of our comrades in South Africa that uh, what we are looking forward for is an inclusive approach, an inclusive engagement, not only engagement where we're going to see uh, the ANC uh, uh, government or should I say the envoys which have been sent to Zimbabwe to negotiate only with ZANU-PF. Uh, yes, ZANU-PF is actually uh, at the center of this crisis but also we need to be consulted as we move forward and in coming up with solutions. These are some of the things we like to, to, to remind the comrades and also to remind the comrades in the MK and, 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 and SACP that they don't need to, 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 to buy into these alternative truths mm -hmm. and say that they shed trenches with Danupiev because a, a lot happened, we lost a lot of cutters during Wanki in Sipolilo campaign, sure. that was an MK Zipra campaign. So I understand, uh, yeah. uh, Mr. Msebele, that you are obviously perhaps trying to rebuild relations because historically, ZAPU and the ANC were very close um, together. But regarding what's going on in Zimbabwe at the moment, what action would you like to see from the ANC? Um, we know, of course, that there were the two envoys uh, sent on behalf of our president to Zimbabwe. Um, what action should South Africa, as a neighbor of Zimbabwe, be taking at the moment? Yes, we, we believe that uh, the best way forward, first is to, is to remind uh, President Ramaphosa that uh, we had Tabombeg in 2008 and 2009 negotiating and coming up with an arrangement, a GNU arrangement. But also we need to remind Comrade uh, uh, Ramaphosa that quite diplomacy does not work in Zimbabwe and, and, and the sunshine policies do not work in Zimbabwe. Uh, they need to take actually a, a, a better stance than that. And they need to voice out uh, uh, of the people's concerns. And right now, there have been quite a number of um, people who are not satisfied in certain quarters of our population uh, on the credibility of the envoys, and that they went to, to Arare and, and they met with uh, ZANU-PF and did not meet with any other stakeholders. That is uh, actually a cause of concern, and we hope that the envoys which Ramaphosa is sending to, to Zimbabwe do not get instructions from Zimbabwe but they get instructions from South Africa and, and, and from SATAC and the AU. 
this is what we are hoping for. We are hoping for an inclusive approach. Mm. Well, it seems like it's, it seems Not like the envoys. I'm sorry to jump in. The envoys have come and gone. You say quiet diplomacy doesn't work. What does work, though? Because from South Africa's position, they're looking at a country where there was a democratic election, albeit with some questions. Um, what must South Africa do exactly? What South Africa has to do, the, the first point of call is to, is, is to include all the stakeholders in these discussions and not limit these stakeholders only to ZANU-PF. The other part which South Africa has to do is to stay away from a ZANU-PF functional backlist, which we are seeing uh, 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 developing, where we have got G40 versus the Costa function in ZANU-PF. Uh, and, and we hope that South Africa doesn't get trapped in those Functional breakfast, but they should also look at uh, and, and include actually uh, other stakeholders in this whole discussions as we move forward. That will be the best possible way forward. Well, thank you yes. very much for your time. Future Msibela, Deputy Secretary for International Relations uh, for the Opposition Movement in Zimbabwe, Zapo, in South Africa this week to meet with the ANC to discuss what is going on in Zimbabwe.